Hello. Would you like to have some idea about the risk of heart attack or stroke in you over the next 10 years? Do you have diabetes or hypertension in your family history or do you have diabetes or hypertension? Or indeed, are you just worried about these things and you want to know more? If these things are relevant to you, then this video will hopefully answer many of your questions and give you a, a plan of action going forward. Now, we all make great plans for the next 10 years. In our 30s, we're looking forward to getting married, perhaps, uh, having children, doing well with our career, making money, paying off our mortgage. We're a little older, we're looking to see our kids get to university, have kids of their own, perhaps, and as we get older still, we look forward to retirement so we can spend time with our wife, husband, our partner, and just do the things that we've been planning to do after years and years of hard work. So we always make these great plans, and it's a good idea to make plans. After all, that's what social creatures do. But how many of us actually make plans for the next 10 years in regards to our health? I expect very few of us actually. I, you know, I speak to a lot of patients and I say to them, have you thought about where your health might be in 10 years? And the usual answers are things like, well, you know, doc, I haven't actually thought about those things. I'm kind of hoping everything's going to be fine. Or, well, I'm looking after myself now, fingers crossed, what will be, will be. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. I don't have to tell you that your health is by far and away the most important item you have in life. Without good health, you can't look after your family properly, you can't do your work properly, you may not even be able to pay your bills effectively. Clinicians today are in a much stronger position to be able to calculate your specific risk of having a heart attack or stroke, perhaps within the next 10 years. These risk calculators, as they are called, are really quite specific. One specific calculator that is just very unique to the United Kingdom population is called Q-Risk2. And I'll tell you more about that towards the end of the video so that you can sit down and calculate your own specific risk. Now, the beauty of these things are they can really be quite um, accurate. So let me give you an example. Think of a 35-year-old Caucasian male. He smokes, let's say, I don't know, 10 cigarettes per day. Nothing else in his history. His risk of having a heart attack or stroke by the time he is 45 years old is just under 2%. Now, that's not high. Of course, that's a relative view. Some people might think a 2% risk is too high for them. But for, for me, as a doctor, 2% is not particularly high. Now, this particular individual, 35-year-old male, if he has a strong family history, and by that I mean a first-degree relative who suffered angina or who has had a heart attack by the time they're 60, then this gentleman's risk rises to double that risk. It's more like 4%. If he has high blood pressure, it's more like 5%. If he develops diabetes in that 10-year time frame, his risk of having a heart attack or stroke by the time he is 45 years of age is a whopping 6%, three times higher than just being a 35-year-old smoker. Now, of course, let's think for a moment how many 35-year-old males that we know who smoke, who are overweight, who might be diabetic and hypertensive. If we put all of these together with family history, we have a whopping 31% chance of having a heart attack or a stroke by the time that gentleman is 45 years of age. And of course, the really frustrating thing is whilst we can't do anything about the unmodifiable risk factors like family history, we can do a great deal about the modifiable ones. During those 10 years, his high blood sugar and his hypertension, we know nothing about this, so we can't modify them. And the injury that those morbidities, we call them, or risk factors cause over that time are things that we really could have avoided had we been able to diagnose those things sooner. And of course, diabetes is a simple blood test. And patients who develop type 2 diabetes, i.e. diabetes in older life, high blood sugar in older life, simple measures like weight control, regular exercise, and perhaps some medications can really effectively reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke. And of course, in many patients, simple things like that can sometimes reverse diabetes altogether. How good is that? And of course, hypertension, we're not interested in your blood pressure when I see you in the clinic that one moment, because it's often high when you meet a heart surgeon or when you see your doctor. I'm more interested in your blood pressure over many hours or perhaps over a few days. And if we don't know that, we can't control it. And if we can't control it, it's doing injury to your body. And there are a whole host of other risk factors like high cholesterol, like lack of exercise, and many other things that Q-risk scoring can do to give you a very accurate idea of what your risk is now, so that you can look at those risk factors and modify them going forward. Now, for me, as a doctor, I'm a heart surgeon. I've been a heart surgeon for 
for many years, I've worked in the NHS for 30 years, the most frustrating thing for me is the knowledge that whilst I can effectively treat people who've developed heart disease, I'd much rather have known about their risk factors 20 years ago or 30 years ago so that I could have modified those risk factors in an attempt to make sure that those patients didn't actually need my services as a heart surgeon. And I think the only way we can do that today effectively is with screening. So we can screen simple blood test measures to look at your numbers to ensure that we know exactly what your Q-risk score is. We can look at not a single ECG monitor, but we can look at your ECG for 14 days using simple devices that we stick to your skin and you can shower with them and they give us a good idea of what your heart rhythm looks like over two week periods. We can monitor your blood pressure over a number of days to ensure that we're not just looking for a single measure, but many hours worth of measurements to give us a much better idea of whether you're hypertensive or not. We can do ultrasound scans of your heart called an echocardiogram to look at the, the muscle of your heart, to look at the function of your heart, and look at the valves within your hearts to make sure that they're working properly, because that's another big problem within the hearts that we often miss for many years until secondary features have damaged the circulation beyond really any effective repair. And of course, we can even look at the heart arteries themselves to look to see whether there's calcium in the heart arteries, or indeed to look to see whether there are any narrowings that are either early onset narrowings or critical narrowings that are asymptomatic, but for which we need to do something. We've all heard of someone who was just dropped dead in the street and the diagnosis was a heart attack. So asymptomatic severe coronary artery disease does occur, and we want to really pick that up, or at least uh, know about it, and indeed avoid it if we possibly can. Here at the Keyhole Heart Clinic, we've tried to put together really bespoke, advanced, front edge, cutting edge uh, screening process. So we can calculate your score, we can look at many of those modifiable risk factors, we, look at, we can look in detail at whether or not you've developed atherosclerosis within your body, cardiovascular disease, and whether or not treatment is required. And of course, by doing all of the, those things, we're looking to reduce the risks of your developing problems if you don't have them, or making sure that we can treat them if you have, but they remain undiagnosed. All of our tests are interpreted by clinicians who are leaders, uh, recognized leaders in cardiac care. And they work at the clinic with us, either in central London locations, or in Essex, or in Kent. And the key here is that we've got people who can really interpret those diagnostic modalities that we use because at the end of the day there's no point in using the best equipment in the world if you don't have the best clinicians interpreting the results of those tests.